All right, guys. So welcome to our first installment of MMA Foundations. Uh, I apologize if I don't seem like I'm super prepared for this, but I don't think that anybody is prepared for what's going on right now. So we're going to do our best to be with you guys uh, you know, every single week, giving you guys new fun stuff to do while everybody's cooped up at home. Uh, behind me, I have uh, everyone uh, who you know and love, Mr. Devlin Dragonfly, WBC 122 and 127 pound champion right here. All right, so we're gonna start uh, with something that uh, has already started to become even more of a good friend of mine. And what, if you guys don't have, you should definitely, you know, get, order from Amazon, maybe Brave, the sporting goods store, uh, whatever. But it's gonna be a jump rope. Um, the reason why jump ropes are super good is because um, they're really good cardio for, uh, for striking sports especially because when we're striking, we're always up on our toes, right? We're always bouncing around. And so um, when we're jump roping, we have to stay up on our calves all of the time. The other reason why they're good is because we learn how to use our hands and our feet together. Whenever I'm throwing punches, I want my feet to land as soon as that punch does. So jump roping, uh, you know, trains those muscles and trains that timing a lot. All right, so let's go. So, you know, the easiest way is both feet, just jumping off of both feet. Once you kind of got the rhythm down on that, you can start switching back and forth, different feet. Then we can do the can can. After you get the, uh, the rhythm of that, try jumping on one foot. This is really good for your calf strength. All right, because every time you're using that same leg, then, an even higher level, you start jumping back and forth, still staying on that one foot. All right? Then, we're going to do our ski jumps, going on one foot. So, if you don't have a jump rope, definitely pick one up. You never know when they're going to close the streets down, too. So, this is just as good as jogging, but you can do it in very small spaces. All right, guys. Cool. Get a jump rope. All right, so um, next thing that we're going to do today is just go over our fight stance. Everything in striking begins with your fight stance. So uh, let's get a good fight stance now. So that way, as we start, you know, adding to our drills, you know, start going into sparring, fighting, all that kind of stuff. We have that good foundation. All right, so first thing that we're going to do is everybody just stand uh, feet shoulder width apart. All right, then you're going to take one foot. Actually, do you have you do it this way? So you're facing. Sure, exactly. So perfect. So everybody take their, uh, their right foot if you're right-handed, left foot if you're left-handed. Take that right foot and step it directly straight back. Now notice, Dragonfly's rear toe is uh, lined up with his rear heel, but his feet are still that shoulder distance apart. So when you step back, don't get narrow here like this. Step this foot straight back, all right? Now this lead foot is gonna be turned out just about 10 degrees. The rear foot is gonna be turned out about 45 degrees. I'm gonna have a slight bend in my knees, I'm always going to be up on my toes, but I don't need to be high up on my toes like this. Now, uh, I'm going to get super, my legs are going to get super, super tired, super quick. But I just want to be light on my feet with this slight bend in my knee. All right? So, um, let's talk about the upper body now. So, chins down. Guys, always, always chins down. Your chin's up in the air, boom, easy target to get knocked out. All right? Hands. My hands are going to be up. My knuckles are at eyebrow height, but they're out in front of my face here, right? So, so Dragonfly, put your, put your fist on your temple. See this right here? This is a straight line for punches, guys. His, his hands are at his eyebrow height, but they're out in front of his face. Good. The next thing that we're going to do is, uh, is kind of the unintuitive part about, uh, about our Muay Thai. This is a traditional Muay Thai fight stance. I see a lot of guys... They start in their fight stance like this, okay? Notice how Dragonfly has his hips pushed forward. He's, he's curling his tailbone under and pushing his hips forward. 
So this is our Muay Thai fight stance. All right, guys, so, you know, standing high on your toes, uh, keeping that bend in your knees, chin down. Notice we both got our rhythm going with our hands, right? All right, cool. So that is, that is our fight stance. That's what we're going to be working out of um, for the rest of class today and for the rest of your Muay Thai careers as well. So um, we're going to start by just going over uh, straight punches. So the first straight punch that we're going to go over is just our jab. Right? Boom. It's our most, uh, most uh, volume. We throw that punch the most. We throw that the most because it's our fastest punch. It's our easiest uh, to access because this shoulder's in front. So this fist is in front. So we're going to use our jab the most, right? The jab, we can, uh, you know, we can use it to do damage. Jabs can definitely do damage. But we really use our jab more to set up our big power shots, okay? Um, but let's go over kind of the fundamentals uh, of a jab. So Dragonfly, I'm actually going to have you move kind of to the center here. Uh, and I'm actually going to have you turn uh, facing this way first, okay? It's a little bit easier to see. Um, actually, let's have you flip around the other way. Oh, now we got this shoulder in front. Wasn't prepared, but, you know, we're learning. We're, you guys are learning martial arts. You know, we're learning how to shoot good videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up on your toes, deep fly. There you go. Okay, cool. So, um, important thing when we're throwing our jab is keeping this elbow, keeping this elbow tight. When I'm throwing my jab, I don't want to have this elbow flaring out here. I want to keep this tight. So go ahead, throw it slow. Notice his his fist stays like um, palm facing out this way until that until that punch lands at the last moment. Then we're going to corkscrew that punch, turn it over. All of my punches, whether they be straight punches, like the jab and the cross, or circular punches, like, um, like hooks or uppercuts, I always want to land on my, uh, my big two knuckles here. Big two knuckles right here. Wrong camera. <laughs> my tech guy says wrong camera. All right. <laughs> Boom. Big two knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I want to have that my two knuckles make a straight line um, up my arm. So I don't want to have my fist. Don't turn your fist out like this. Make sure that there's one straight line here. Boom, for the knuckles all the way up the arm, just like Dragonfly is doing over there. All right, so, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to say, uh, you know, one, and Dragonfly is going to throw that, throw that punch out and then hold it there. Uh, and we're just going to check to see that everything, you know, all the form is correct. So go ahead and throw that. So one. Boom. Another thing, too, we didn't talk about. Notice how his shoulder is uh, hiding his, his beautiful face here. We, we can't see it right now. That's because he's got good technique. Boom. He's hiding that. He's hiding that chin. This is, this is what we want. Um, his, his, uh, he's got that straight line running from his knuckle all the way down his arm. And uh, let's flip this way. Also, this uh, elbow is tight, and this hand is up on a simple. We call that our incidental defense. Uh, we always we want to have the shoulder up, and we want to have this hand up. When we're exchanging punches, guys, and kicks, when we're in fights or when we're sparring, they're gonna throw be throwing punches and kicks too. So if I throw lazy, my hands down here, and he throws a cross at the same time I throw a jab, I'm gonna take that shot. So we want to be, have this shoulder up, this hand tight. All right, and two, he's going to go back to his fight stance. One, two, just throw some jabs while I'm talking. One of the things that's going to be super, super uh, important for you guys as you're training uh, at home by yourselves is uh, learning how to visualize that opponent, okay? Whether we're, you know, doing static drills like this, where we're just throwing, you know, single punches or whatever it is, or whether we're moving around and shadow boxing, whatever kind of drill we're doing by ourselves, we always want to make sure that we're big.
turning up that heel. I can't have my foot flat on the ground, boom, flat on the ground when I'm throwing the cross. If my foot's flat, I'm not gonna be able to rotate my hips, and then I'm not gonna be able to rotate my shoulders. That's how we get our disc, that's how we get our reach and our power on our on our straight punches and all of our punches really is that is that rotation of our hips and our shoulders. So we gotta pivot on that back foot. Everything else is pretty much the same. I'm not gonna turn him around this time, but you can definitely bet that he's got his other hand up, you know, that uh, protecting himself with that incidental defense. And again, you can't see his jaw here because he's got that shoulder up tight. Two, back to your fight, Sam. Notice too, his punch is coming out straight. It's, he, I, we don't wanna flare our elbow. Just like we talked about it on the jab, I don't wanna flare my elbow with the cross. This thing's coming straight, I look elbow tight, elbow tight, bang, corkscrewing at that last second. All right, so one, boom, two. I just throw a couple perfect crosses for us, B-fly. Bang, there's a knockout right there. Boom, that's how you bring home belts. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, guys, so um, that was just kind of our first introduction video today. We're going to go over uh, the different punches. We're also going to start making a teaching skill that you do both by yourself. Uh, at your house and then also hopefully you're not stuck in your home completely by yourself so we're going to talk about ways you can train um, with your friends and family in your house whether or whether or not they have martial arts experience that's one of the things that I want to do with these videos um, is I know that you know everybody in your house isn't def isn't necessarily a member of Peak, but we're going to talk about you know what it's like to train with a with a brand new person okay but uh, I don't want to leave you guys uh, without getting our sweat on today um, so uh, we're just gonna do a uh, um, we're gonna do just like a regular like five minute warm up. Um, but we're actually do it five times, and so it's gonna turn into a 15 minute workout. Okay. So um, for the first minute, we're gonna start with jumping jacks. Go. <laughs> Dragonfly, if you guys didn't hear. He just asked me if he had to do this for the whole 15 minutes, and the answer is yes. <laughs> All right, no, I'm not going to make him do that. Um, but we definitely want you guys at home to do that. The next minute is going to be squats. So, guys, when we're doing squats, we want to keep our feet uh, just over shoulder width, the, uh, just over shoulder width apart. We want to keep our weight back, out, back on our toes. Okay? So try not to come up on your toes. Or try not to lean any forward your back straight. I like to uh, I like to pretend like I have the bar on and I'm, like I'm actually at a gym and it's open. And yeah, that'd be nice, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, for our next minute, we're going to do uh, push-ups. Now, we're going to go over, uh, you know, different kinds of push-ups uh, in the, you know, in these series, but, you know, the kind of most basic fundamental way to do our push-ups, first of all, I want to have my hands uh, stack directly below my shoulders. So don't stretch your guys. Don't stretch yourself out like this. And don't do too wide like this. Just straight under the um, straight under the shoulders. Uh, keep your elbows uh, tight into your body. And the next uh, the next minute we're going to do tabletop crunches. So notice, actually, Dragonfly wants you to come all the way up off the mat and open up that chest. Yep, and open up. Good. Try not to cross your legs too. <laughs> yes, don't be a cheater like Dragonfly. Tell you what belts. <laughs> Cheat to win. Just kidding. That is a that is a message that is not uh, uh, certified by Pete. And for our last minute, we're going to do mountain climbers. One thing that's super important with mountain climbers, guys, is I want to keep my hips low. So start your high plank position, dragonfly. Boom. See this? This is this is where we're going to stay during that whole mountain climber. So go ahead, keep going. Boom. Notice he's basically in that high plank position, um, but uh, but he's doing his mountain climber. So this keeps the core engaged a lot. Versus if he goes high like that, yeah. Now we're not using our core as much, and that's what we want to avoid. All right, cool. Thank you for your demonstration, Dragonfly. Yes, so homework assignment for you guys is finish this 15-minute uh, uh, this 15-minute workout. So it's going to be 
uh, one minute, uh, one minute jumping jacks, one minute squats, one minute push-ups, one minute tabletop crunches, and one minute um, and one minute mountain climbers. Okay, thank you so much for Dragonfly, and thank you so much to you guys. Um, you know, this has been you know crazy and unexpected for everybody, but we're doing the best that we can to keep you guys in shape, keep you guys entertained, and keep the community together, which that's going to be the most part, uh, the most important part of all of this. So thank you so much. So I cut.